So this week, randomly saw a belated MWC kickoff over in sunny Barcelona. Anyone who doesn't know what MWC, it stands for Mobile World Congress. It's essentially a massive geeky uh, mobile tech expo that happens every year in February. And it's essentially my chance to knock back endless ice cold Estrella Dams and San Miguel's in the Spanish sunshine instead of freeze my nads off like everyone else back home. And by drinking beer in the Spanish sun, I do of course mean uh, going hands on with the latest mobile technology innovations in a uh, hall packed with other tech geeks. That's obviously my, my favorite part. Let me tell you though, that conference center, after just a few hours of MWC action, I mean, that place gets hotter than hell. You got these massive spotlights beaming down on you all day. And frankly, us tech geeks, we just react to that shit like a massive pile of fish left out in the sun. That air can only be described at the end of the third day as ripe. Anyway, last year it was outright cancelled, this year it was shifted to June, but pretty much no manufacturers actually bothered to turn up by the looks of it because of general ball acre and travel restrictions. So once again, instead of drinking margaritas on the beach, I've had to make do with just down and tinnies in my skinnies on the sofa. Those actually kind of sound like the lyrics to some long lost Chumbawamba song or something. Down and tinnies in my skinnies on the sofa. Anyway, for those who missed it, this was the intro, sort of, uh, for everyone else who's already buggered off. Oh well, never mind. Uh, roll credits. Techspert Weekly. So sorry, the whole point of that intro, if you can call it that, was the fact that MWC has actually happened this week, but unfortunately there's been bugger all news coming out of it. On Monday, but completely independently of MWC, Samsung girded all loins for some hot One UI smartwatches with a closer look at this fresh OS, designed in collaboration with Google. And so far it does look proper smart, like Tizen hooked up with Wear OS and pumped out a super hot baby which they then injected full of awesome drugs to make it one clever wee bugger. Despite being a fresh new platform, One UI is fully compatible with existing Google Play apps and Samsung watch faces with a custom design tool for crafting your own faces if you're one of them creative types. You should see greater synchronicity between your phone and your watch as well. So for instance, if you install an app on your smartphone that's compatible with your One UI watch, it'll also pop up automatically right there on your wrist, ready to use. And on top of all that, Samsung and Google are also promising nice, smooth, slick performance and also longer battery life as well, which is just as well for any Wear OS users, because of course, those watches generally last about as long as a box of donuts at a fat kids convention. And if all of that sounds good enough to get your nipply region all tingling, well, the bad news is that there's no set day yet for the first One UI watch or watches to emerge. It's just going to be sometime this summer, you massive teasers. And this week also saw Sennheiser launch some new buds, the CX True Wireless, and yeah, they do kind of make it look like somebody rammed a rod through your head, but they do sound proper lush at least, and my full review is live right now. And if you happen to prefer having something small to handle, unlike your mum, then brace yourself for all three inches of the Morny Mint, a dinky Android blower that's undeniably cute and also a pain in the f***ing arse for playing games on, although I still give it a bloody good go. Again, I've got some video shenanigans with this teeny wee bugger right here on Techspert. There were a few other True Wireless earbud launches, a couple of little bits trickling out, but that is about it. This is by far the most quiet MWC week ever. I mean, the number of times I've been over there and been putting literally four or five hands-on videos live every day, yeah, this, this, this year's just sucked. But fingers crossed, I'll be able to bring you my usual half-cut coverage of the latest mobile tech, fresh from MWC 2022, February in Barcelona. And uh, just a quick mobile network deal for any fellow Brits to help cheer you up after a week of f***ing rain and just general random weather. Uh, Vodafone is currently offering a 15 gig data plan for just a tenner a month through its Voxy service. And that includes unlimited use of select social media shenanigans like Twitter, Instagram and WhatsApp if that's your bag. Or alternatively, you can also snaffle 20 gigs a month for £15, including unlimited use of video services like Netflix and YouTube as well. Hey, you can stream Uncle Spurt 24 hours a day on your mobile network, no extra cost. And apparently, for reasons, on a Friday, you also get a free lemon or blueberry muffin from Costa. I mean, that's it. Done deal. You know, living the dream, free muffin. And those deals will be hanging around until July the 29th. It's not much longer, so you might want to get your skates on a bit. Uh, and of course, speaking of mobile networks, there's, uh, you know, ever grown controversy around the potential introduction or reintroduction of Roman charges if you're going to be traveling around Europe now that we've buggered off out of the EU. As it stands right now, most networks, including Vodafone 3 and O2, are pledging not to charge 
charge customers, but there will be a data cap, a fair usage cap as they're calling it, generally around sort of 12 to 20 gigs a day. So you can't go over that, otherwise you will stop being charged. Of course, you can't spell cheeky without EE, who did decide to go back on its original pledge not to reintroduce uh, the data roam and charge. You'll have to pay two quid a day when traveling, uh, but that is only for pay monthly customers who signed up after, or I think it's from actually, July the 7th, and that won't take effect until January 2022. But anyway, that's enough hot mobile network chat. Let's all go have an ice cold shower just to calm down a bit. And then regrettably, it is time for that part of the show that's about as much fun as inserting live crabs down your pants. That is assuming you're not really into all that kinky stuff. It's viewer comments. Burr, 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 burr. Viewer comments. <laughs> So first up this week, Dermot says, your references to drink always get me in the mood for some Friday night boozing. Well, I will definitely drink to that, Dermot, but remember, kiddies, always drink responsibly. Uh, next up, someone who doesn't actually appear to have a username uh, randomly says, next week is episode 69, Nice. Yeah, are you proud at how good I've been? Not a single a gag about 69 this entire episode. Oh, gagging during a 69, definitely not a good luck. I think off the top of my head, I've only done the one your mum joke as well. Must be maturing in my old age. This time next week, I'll be presenting in my dressing gown and pipe. Uh, next up, Michael says, I know how you feel as I've been a Sunderland supporter for 20 plus years. Yeah, I mean, commiserations, mate. It's worse than having the bloody clap supporting Sunderland. At least an STD only pops up every few months to give you grief, so I've heard. And supporting Sunderland every sodden weekend is a sob fest. It's just, yeah, I'm, I've made a, a vow not to get my daughter into it because I just torn her butter through that kind of misery and then also I have to deal with her general grumpiness as well as my own every sodden weekend. Uh, also on the subject of funny, but this time the good old Euros, of course, uh, Somalia says, the way Germany's been playing, I think I fancy England's chances more, but let's see. Yeah, absolutely cold, that one. Definitely unbelievable. We managed to beat them 2-0 as well. Once again, another game without conceding a goal. Not really sure what's going on there. Wasn't exactly the most exciting game, unfortunately. Like the Monday games, the uh, the Spanish and the French games, they were, my God, I was on the edge of the seat. I didn't even really care what the results was going to be. But yeah, we're through through to the next round, so that's all that matters. So let's, let's see how we go on uh, on Saturday. I'll be having a few tinnies with that one. Uh, Graham says, I owned the Razor Eye. It was that dog's bollocks. I remember going into a three mobile shop and asking if they'd be stocking it. They laughed at me saying, Motorola don't make phones anymore. Little did they know, very little. You know, those lads are just pumping out phones for fun these days, which hopefully means they'll eventually get around to doing a mod roll at I-2021 or something. And next, Jason asks, Hey Chris, will you be reviewing the Honor 50 and 50 Pro? Um, yeah, that's definitely the plan. As soon as they get a launch outside of China, basically they will be coming to the UK at some point. That is Honor's plan, apparently. Uh, so hopefully in the next sort of month or so, we'll see something emerge there. Because uh, yeah, it's been ages. Uh, absolutely young since I had a fun love an Honor phone. I think the last one was like the Honor 30 Pro Plus or Plus Pro. So yeah, hopefully we'll get word soon. Because um, yeah, I used to love the Honor smartphones. They used to be like the major Motorola rival back before obviously the likes of Xiaomi and uh, Realme came over here. Uh, next up, Wolves Wanderers says, uh, Chris, if you only had 400 quid in your pocket, what phone would it be for you? Uh, well, the easy copper answer to that is, do I have the video for you? Best budget phones under £400, definitely go check that out. If you can't be asked to watch another 15 minutes of me bollocking on, and frankly I wouldn't blame you, then uh, easy option would be the Poco F3, especially if performance is one of your sort of top priorities. Uh, absolute blinder for 320 quid. Uh, otherwise, I'm expecting a slew of uh, strong rivals in that sort of price bracket to come through soon, the likes of the OnePlus Nord 2, uh, Pixel 5a hopefully won't be too far off. Uh, your mum says uh, you had your five days of summer, be happy. Yeah, fair play, but shush your mum, I'll deal with you later. Uh, next up, Slowride TV says, can you connect a PS4 or a gaming console to the glasses? Uh, I'm assuming you're referring to the TCL glasses that we covered last week. Uh, no, it's a, it's a display port connection. Uh, there's no compatibility right now with any consoles, uh, unfortunately. Plus it was a very short cable, so it wouldn't be ideal anyway. It's really just for connecting to something that's sat in your lap or in your pocket at best. Uh, but yeah, no, I like a wireless version or something like that. That would be absolutely fantastic if you could stream uh, yeah, a bit of PS5 action right to your face. And next up, Sigar says, budget phone manufacturers should drop the useless macro cameras and wireless charging and use that money for IP ratings. Uh, Big Facts by Greetham has replied, I love macro camera because this camera lets me see leaves and other things very closely. I mean, fair fucks. Whatever you can do for entertainment, I guess. I mean, when I was a lad, me and my mates used to paint each other with sticks for fun. Now you can take pictures of leaves, really, 
up close. As any regular viewers will know my thoughts on uh, macro cameras in general, you know, that any benefit that you're getting from getting, you know, an up close focal point on your camera is immediately undone generally by the crap resolution and just general poor photo quality. Generally you're best off just using the main camera and then just cropping in. And next up Bog Lizard says British Empire a 90s classic. Colin Weatherby the janitor and Pigsy monkey magic were formative roles in my younger years which is probably why I turned out to be the odd character that I am today. Yeah I, rem I, re I remember watching it occasionally as a sprog and you know it was all right but let's face it every episode was basically the same. Brits would invite some sort of big wig uh, to the leisure center for the day and then either his wife would try and shag them or Colin would accidentally kill them and then Brits would would flare his nostrils and that would be it, go to credits. However, somebody uh, did actually point out to me that it is the 30th anniversary of the British Empire this year, 2021, so potentially some sort of crap reunion is on the cards. If it's good enough for friends, it's certainly good enough for the British Empire. I can just imagine uh, Colin and Linda and all the rest of them having a bit of a cry on each other's shoulders, reminiscing about the good old days when Colin accidentally unleashed a shark in the leisure centre swimming pool. And next up, Red Shutter Photography says, I'm northern and proud of it, however I can't stand cheese or gravy on my chips. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, each to their own, hence the whole meal thing, I guess. I mean, I, I do love copious amounts of cheese and gravy slash curry sauce on my chips, but I will make do with loads of vinegar, some sort of added moisture slash extra calories. I've really got to stop shooting these goddamn shows before lunch as well, because now my stomach is absolutely doing fits. And next up, Kevin says, why do Nokia have to have Brandon on the front and the back of their phones, and the two new ones are too much money for the crap Snapdragon 480? Yeah, it's, it's not that the 480 is bad per se it's just disappointing considering as you say for that sort of price point you generally get a snapdragon 700 series chipset and quite a lot of rivals so you know the 480 will do everything you need it to uh, you can play games absolutely fine as you'll see for my uh, nokia x10 and nokia x20 unboxings but unfortunately sometimes you do see bits of lag in there uh, camera processing can take a little while but yeah hard agree on the nokia brandon as well though those fat lips are not a good luck in 2021 absolutely fine you know several years ago when pretty much every manufacturer did did it. Uh, next up, certain someone said, I thought it was you in the thumbnail. Isn't, isn't that guy ginger though? I mean, you know, I'm not knocking the gingers. I would happily have a full head of hair, even if, you know, it had to be ginger, some sort of monkey's paw situation. I wish I had lots of hair. Oh no, you give me lots of hair, but it's ginger. Gah, curse you, fate. And come on, dude, I would never get away with a turtleneck. That's for damn sure. I'm not some Silicon Valley twat. Time is absolutely spanking on as always. So let's make this the last one for the week. Uh, Tech Curve says, you are not a good person. I asked you to help me get retweets so that I could win a smartwatch and you refused. Mm, no, I'm not a good person because I like to lock up orphans in my basement and then torture them 24 hours a day by blasting non-stop Ed Sheeran. Uh, Tech Curve, mate, I've honestly got absolutely no idea what you're referring to there. Uh, apologies for whatever it is I have done to wrong you. I'm sure I'll burn in hell for all eternity. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much to everyone who commented last week. Massive, massive appreciation as always. Please do slap your comments down below and we'll try and smash through as many of those as possible next week. Speaking of which, next week, next week, f***ing hell is next week. Well, let's begin that with an Xperia 1 Mark III update. It's the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III update. And this week's update is the Sony PRs actually got in touch on Wednesday, I think it was, to say that the Xperia 1 Mark III review units have arrived in Blighty. So hopefully should be getting my hands on one either at the very arse end of this week or hopefully the start of next week. So stay tuned for my full unboxing and an in-depth review with that big bugger hopefully shortly. It's the Sony Xperia 1 Mark III update and it doesn't look like there's any big tech launches going on next week something nothing that i've got in the diary anyway but i do have some pre-briefs so there is going to be some hot launch action in the mobile smartphone world coming up in july so stay tuned for more of that hotness on TechSpurt. and please do join me again next friday same time same place the youtubes uh, for more TechSpurt weekly action thanks again for actually watching this bollocks right to the end always appreciated have yourselves a fantastic weekend and see you then hopefully Cheers, love you. Down in tinnies in my skinnies on the sofa.